Welcome to AirTV. We're so glad you're here with us uh, for the third episode of AirTV. We've been talking about Israel. We've just celebrated uh, the Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and we believe that God has given us a clean slate so that we can move forward with our lives in this new year. And uh, we just want to encourage you to know that you're loved by God, that He has a plan for your life. One of my favorite verses in the old Bible is Jeremiah 29:11 where it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So today we're going to be talking more about Israel. I've just returned from Israel about three weeks ago, and I had the privilege of sitting down with, with John William Vanderhoven. I believe that this interview will be enlightening for you, and it will be encouraging for you to understand more about God's love for the Jewish people and for the nation of Israel. It's a real privilege for me to be here with this kind-hearted, anointed servant of the Lord, the grandson of dear Lester Summerall. May God bless him for all the work he has done. I still know that I, years ago, was invited by him to come to Indiana to speak there. I know his heart was for Israel, and I should say for the Lord first and for Israel because that's what the Lord has shown me very clearly over the years, that we can only love Israel because of our love and passion for the Messiah and the King of Israel. Jesus was not a Baptist pastor. He was the great rabbi of Nazareth, the Messiah and King of Israel. That because at the time that he came, he was not seen to be the Messiah. God freed that, as Paul said, the diminishing of Israel or their rejection of that wonderful Messiah at that time freed the possibility for us to become uh, grafted into the Israel of God. So we are Israelites of God. We are children of Abraham by faith. Paul dares even to say, not he is a Jew that has been circumcised outwardly, but he is a Jew that has received the circumcision of the Holy Spirit upon his heart. We are part of Israel. And what we call today modern Israel is actually only Judah. Judah came back. The ten tribes never came back. But God says that as Judah comes back, we who have received the mercy and grace of God, uh, to become uh, connected up with the God of Israel that we now can call our Heavenly Father. It, it is an amazing thing. It is such an amazing thing that what Paul says is so true. If the diminishing of them has become our riches as Gentiles, that when something went wrong 2,000 years ago, when them, they did not perceive the day of their visitation, when the Messiah rolled into the city on a donkey, has been turned by God to make it possible for Gentiles from every nation to become grafted into the Israel of God. And as I said, what we call today modern Israel is really Judah. Judah came back. You can read it in Hosea that it says uh, 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 the ten tribes, Israel, I shall call them no more my people. They will not come back, but Judah will come back, Hosea 1 says. And Judah came back, and Judah began to uh, live on the land where formerly the ten tribes uh, lived. For instance, Zebulun and Naphtali lived around the Sea of Galilee. But when Jesus came there, we read in the Gospel of jo John, not the Naphtalines came to him or the Zebulonites, but the Jews came to him. So the Jews spread out over the whole country and later were scattered after Rome destroyed the city under Titus. But for me it is something unbelievable because Judah is not full Israel. And that's why Paul says something unbelievably um, uh, powerful. He says, when Judah comes back, the fullness of the Gentiles will have preceded it. And ten out of each nation, as Zechariah says, will take hold of the sleeve of a Jew and say, we belong together. We will go with you. 
Why ten? Why not nine? Why not seven? Why ten Gentiles? Is God retrieving the lost ten tribes of Israel by the born again believers who are Israelites of God, children of Abraham, even Judaized by the Holy Spirit in their hearts, circumcision? that they begin, and I see it all over the world. I was in Hong Kong, the Chinese were weeping, I was in Beijing, and the way that they love Israel, the modern Israel today that actually is revived Judah, it is amazing, it's as if the Gentiles say, this is my country, and Ruth becomes the symbol of the entire church when she says to Naomi, symbolizing Israel, your God is my God, Naomi, and your people are my people. My son served in the Israeli army, so did my daughter. There are people uh, uh, working now with me who send their sons to the, to, the, to the Israeli army because they go the whole way of what Ruth said. Where you go, I will go, and where you lay down, I will lay down. And where you die, I'm willing to die. There are Gentile believers who are not just praying for Israel while they wait on the rapture and say, Israel, you can do without us now. We are going to dine with your Lord and we are your Savior in heaven. He's going to feast with us while you go through your tribulation, which is preached 80% to the Christian uh, population of this world. It is unbelievable. The Lord is going to feast with us when his own people, of whom he is the Messiah and King, are going through, and we who should be there with them, should be there with them because we are part of them. We have sat with, not just with our flippant lips, but with our heart. Where you go, we will go. Where you lay down, we will lay down. As my Arab wife, who is now in heaven, said so wonderfully, she said, Lord, I don't know about this rapture, but I choose, and I thought later, that's what Paul said, I'd rather be pushed out of the book of life for my brethren's sake. So it, it was the spirit of Christ of my wife. My wife, as an Arab Christian, she said, Lord, I, if there is a rapture, I prefer to stay with Israel till Israel is out of the, uh, uh, the troubles, and then I will feast. And this is what Israel is waiting for. The Lord did not leave them when they were uh, in need of him, but he came to them in the night. Of, 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 of their uh, uh, loneliness. And we should stay with them because the Lord says, if you go the same way as Ruth did to Naomi, where you die, I'm willing to die, you will also receive the blessing. What does the Bible say? You will be comforted with the comfort that God will give to the Jews in Jerusalem. We will dance with them and the Lord will come down and we grafted into Israel together with Judah will be the whole Israel of God that will welcome the Messiah back to this earth. I hope you enjoyed this segment with Jan William Vanderhoven. I believe that he is a man who has a passion for Israel. I know he has a passion for Israel and I believe that God has a passion for Israel. And so we appreciate you being with us today. Uh, we appreciate your encouragement, your prayers, and we appreciate your financial support uh, here at the uh, LSEA, Lester Summerall Evangelistic Association. It's a part of Air TV. Um, one of the ways that we support our ministry isn't just through donations, but also through putting resources in your hands. We've mentioned before uh, understanding uh, the, the demonic realm and understanding our authority over darkness. And there's a book my grandfather wrote called Demons the Answer Book. I believe it will be a blessing to you. Also another book that, uh, that was recently uh, updated called The Names of God. God made a lot of promises to us, but a lot of them are connected to His covenant name. So get a hold of these books. Go to Air TV or LesterSumrall.com. Get a hold of some of those resources. And just remember this, that at that point in time, when you feed your faith, you will starve your doubts to death. See you next time on Air TV.